In 2001, seven polar bears are rescued from a circus on a Caribbean island where they're being forced to perform in inhumane and very warm, life-threatening conditions. One of them is a small, friendly female named Berla. Berla has flown to the safety of the Detroit Zoo where she meets animal behavior specialist Elsa Paulson. Elsa works with Berla, helping the polar bear recover both mentally and physically. Elsa tells a story in her new book. It's called Berla's Story, One Polar Bear's Amazing Recovery from Life as a circus act. Uh, Elsa on the show this morning chatting about this and you uh, right off the get-go when we were chatting just over here in the green room you were saying that there's a good life lesson to take from this whole story uh, from from Berla's story. And yeah and that's actually why I wrote it. It's a it's a feel-good story. Everyone hundreds of people were involved in the rescue and the recovery of these bears and organizations and people just dropped the human agenda and they focused on the animals agenda and when we do that, animals thrive. And when animals thrive, we thrive. Yeah. So it worked out really well that way. And because organizations that were normally opposed, uh, philosophically opposed to each other, yeah. worked together, like the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, PETA, the, there were senators in the United States Senate, uh, actors, singers, all kinds of folks from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, got involved in this. And they just focused exclusively on the bears themselves and it worked out very well. We just saw a picture um, uh, of, of Berla on the circus ball uh, during uh, during one of the performances. The uh, Here she is here. Um, this is when she was still on the Caribbean island, right? And then you first met her um, in Detroit working for the, we should mention Elsa has worked in the Calgary Zoo for about 18 years, but you were now working with the Detroit Zoo. Right. And tell us about the first encounter. I remember vividly from reading uh, in, in the book that th there was something to do with grapes. And what was the significance <laughs> of the grapes? Well, and here I, it is here. Here you go. Yeah. I never rely on my personality to make friends. I bring food. <laughs> food. Okay. <laughs> so I had some grapes. I wasn't actually trying to feed her as much as trying to reach out to her. I see. And she was interested in them. I don't know. We don't really know what her diet was in terms of what additional food she had had. We know that she had a very uh, insufficient diet, as did the other bears. Mm -hmm. Bread, um, lettuce, and dog food is what they were fed okay. at the circus. Um, and polar bears are carnivores, right? So they're omnivores. Yes, oh, they're they considered. Okay, they're in, yeah, yeah, they're okay. considered carnivores, but they are omnivores. Sure. So, and we capitalize that on we capitalize on that in the zoo world. So, grapes um, and other fruits and so on are yeah. nice treats for them. And so I was just trying to reach out to her. Developing the trust. That's right. right developing yeah. trust and yeah. so on. So I was really surprised by her initial. Uh, attitude for a bear in a crate. Yeah. She was very relaxed and that surprised me because bears normally aren't that relaxed in crates. But it wasn't until down the road that I realized that the only time she wasn't abused and the other bears from the same rescue weren't abused was when they were in crates treated like cargo. Then they were safe. Mm -hmm. They weren't in the ring. Um, they there didn't have to perform. To it, suppose, there was right? security yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was interesting, we kept in touch with all the other uh, zoos that were involved and compared notes and they were having the same, they were seeing the same behaviors. The bear was really relaxed in a crate when ignored uh, and not ignored when out of the crate. So it was, or excuse me, not uh, relaxed when out of the crate. When during so the performances very yeah. and things, right? Okay, I mean, um, uh, so we're just going to scroll through a few pictures here. Uh, Berla and Triton. This is a bear Triton, that she, yeah. she uh, friends. Is, no, was Triton her mate? Is that what eventually Triton happened? Triton ended up being uh, her original mate. Okay. Yeah, she had uh, several mates, but yeah. Triton was her original mate, yeah. And then Berla eventually had a cub named Tallini yes. down the road with, right. a, with her second mate, right? Uh, that was with Triton. Oh, it was yeah, with Triton. Was with okay, Triton. Here, here's yeah. Tallini on yeah. the left there as well. And what interesting thing is, we scroll through the pictures here. We'll eventually come along one uh, where we see Berla kind of floating in some water. This is from the underwater perspective, stalking seals. Yeah. Now, how how significant was that? It was really important to uh, here us. It is here. The yeah. uh, Detroit Zoo has a very long tunnel uh, where the bears have visual access to the seals, and the seals have visual access to the bears and they get used to each other and uh, the other bears who were first second and third generation captive develop friendships mm -hmm. with seals and vice versa the seals would be looking for the bears to pay tag and that kind of thing <laughs> and uh but Berla's attitude towards seals was that they're for eating Food. and hunting yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and she never swayed from that and she taught Tallini how to hunt seals nice. and it's the first time that had ever been recorded in captivity certainly and uh 
So that's why we knew that she was from the wild somewhere. It was, we were told originally that she had come through the province of Manitoba's mm -hmm. polar bear export program, that three of the bears in that circus rescue had come from Manitoba legally. Yeah. But when we knocked down the individual bears to do veterinary checkups and so on, uh, we found that none of the bears had uh, tattoos on the inside of their lip or tattoos anywhere. So, and the Manitoba government tattoos every animal uh, for the programs that they send out. And uh, chances are that she may have come from uh, Canada, either Manitoba, Ontario, or Quebec, northern, sure. but uh, not legally. Yeah. So the Manitoba government was beat up because I they bet. were said to have legally exported these bears, but in my opinion, they definitely didn't. She wasn't part of that export program. Bearless story. One polar bear's amazing recovery from life as a circus act. Uh, Elsa Paulson, uh, kind enough to come on this morning, sharing details. We have links, of course, to more information on our book on our website. Uh, an interesting read. Pick it up. Nice to meet you, too, Nice by the to way. meet you, too.